Welcome back, and as always, a delight to have with us Dan Perkins. Uh, he's a storyteller. He's the author of the uh, Brotherhood of the Red Nile Trilogy, which uh, centers around the Islamic nuclear terrorism against the United States. There's a picture of all three of his uh, books there on the screen. Uh, you'll see him often on the dailycaller.com or writes there in clashdaily.com, uh, uh, the Daily Surge, the Hill. Uh, he's all over the place, but he gives us a few moments every day, and we, uh, or, or every once in a while, I should say, and we certainly value that. He's a brother. He works hard, and I can't say enough about the work that he does with Songs and Stories for Soldiers. Us, and you need to check that out and support him. Songs and Soldiers for uh, st excuse me, Songs and Stories for Soldiers. Us. Hi, Dan. How you doing, bud? Good morning. I don't know the last time you and I talked, but perhaps. You don't know that I've added two more blogs. I'm writing for Laura Ingram Life Set, and a week ago today I started writing for Newsmax. Congratulations. Thank I didn't you. know that. Yeah. God bless you. That's wonderful. Well, listen, uh, being the expert you are in terrorism, any connection in Spain? Is that is that clearly a terrorist act, and where is that leading? Oh, it's, 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 there's no question it's a terrorist act. Um, again, we're not getting domestically we're not getting all of the story of what's going on but in reality um, we have a conflict because we have um, um, separatists that are involved in trying to um, split the country and they've been trying to do it for some time um, the uh, the analysis of the of the people who were terrorists so far uh, almost half of them were Moroccans. Um, and so, or Moorish as some people call them. Um, so what we have is, uh, I know this is going to sound terrible to say it this way, Perry, but it's their turn. Um, the, things have been quiet since the bus bombing or the train bombing almost 15 years ago. Uh, but they're, the police have been reporting for it at least a year, an increase in the number of arrests, arrests of people who are known terrorists. Um, the thing that really concerns me is not so much, uh, and I'm not discounting what happened in Barcelona in any way, shape or form, but what really surprised me was the aftermath when they discovered, the last number I heard, 21, in essence, very significant uh, bombs that were in the process of being built out of Barcelona. Uh, and the chances are they were not going to be taken out of the country. They were going to be used in the country. So it, they averted a major, major, major disaster. Wow. So Europe as a whole is in a real mess. Do you think the EU or other countries that have been, you know, socialized to an extent are waking up to the problem or are they just going to take it as it comes? That's a very good question. I would point to you, sir to the direction of the British Prime Minister after the second attack. And I'm mm. quoting her directly. Quote, when will this stop? End of quote. You have the leader of Britain asking the question in the public sector, when will this stop? The answer, Madam Prime Minister, when you do something about it. But that clearly is an example of what's going on they recognize that it's a problem, but they have no clue about how to try and figure out what to do with it. So, Europe's not a safe place to travel to these days, no matter where you go, whether it's France or Spain or the uh, over in the UK or anywhere else. Uh, I just saw a report this morning about the number of declining airline tickets sold going to Europe in general. Um, it is, it's a tough situation because uh, it really, it really depends on where you want to go. And what I mean by that, if you look at the attacks, the, the attacks are very logical in this sense. They're going to the inner cities where there is the greatest concentration of people, where they can do the greatest amount of damage. And so by using trucks and cars as weapons, as they've been doing for almost a year now, um, there's... There's very little acquisition expense to get the truck because they steal it or the car. And and so that they, they're using weapons uh, that are not very sophisticated, but they're extremely effective in two ways. 
uh, they injure more people than they kill, which means there are more and more people to spread their fear about being there. And number two, uh, they're easy to, to mobilize in, on a moment's notice because you, could, you don't even have to li li legally get the car. You go steal the car or the truck, which has happened in some cases. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole new appro approach that they're using. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if it doesn't come across the Atlantic Ocean and land here in the United States. Um, are, are you saying, Dan, that it's possible that the, uh, these European countries uh, might have intelligence about these groups and their movement, or their whereabouts and how they're moving and maybe even the acquiring of certain pieces of equipment, but they're afraid to go in and get them? I think because of political correctness, you're absolutely right. I think the, those European countries, those European nations are still highly, highly intimidated based on political correctness. Wow. Well, when I said to you, the prime minister doesn't say, says, when was this going to stop? Yeah. Which says, I don't have an answer to how to go out and do anything about it. Uh, the, the, the Spanish have a, a pretty good intelligent network and have arrested over 750 suspected terrorists. But I'm not so sure that the rest of the Europe is doing the same thing. All right, let me swing your attention over to North Korea for what time I got left here. Uh, it looks like it's back down a little bit. What's your take? Well, today was the day that the United States and South Korean military were to do a joint war game, the largest ever done. And it was the triggering point of the North Korean uh, leader that if it took place, he would launch his, he would reconsider launching his missiles to, uh, to Guam. It started this morning. I haven't seen anything in the press that any, any, any missiles were launched. Uh, and I, and I want to I want to make sure that your audience understands what I'm about to say. If he doesn't do anything, and the and the war games continue, then he's lost all of his credibility, which could be an extremely dangerous situation because he will realize that he walked away from what was an opportunity. And I suspect he could, he could unleash as much thunder as he possibly could. So it's a, I think it's an actually more dangerous situation was two weeks ago. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, US. no, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of wait and see. All right, the president's gonna make an announcement about Afghanistan tonight. What do you think he's gonna say? I think he's gonna say he wants to put some more troops back in Afghanistan to clean up the mess that Obama left behind. What's that look like? Uh, what I'm hearing, maybe as many as 30,000 troops. Whoa. Uh, obviously with a plan. I mean, he's got yeah. some great military minds around him, so I don't think they're going in for the sake of going in. They're going in with something in mind, don't you think? I think it's going to be another version of shock and awe. Oh, okay. I, I, don't, see think, what I don't think they're going to be in there a long time. I think they're going to come in, guns blazing, taking out a lot of people, and then they'll walk away. What's your take on Steve Bannon going out yes, or on Friday? That's a tough one. Um, he basically uh, said after he left uh, that he's going to rain hell and fire on all those people who have been trying to object to uh, Mr. Trump as being president, which is another side issue. Um, Democrats got a really big problem because the man who's supposedly not supposed to be very presidential on the world stage seems to be more presidential than anybody else on the world stage. And that's hurting the Democrats because they're story about he's not fit to serve is, 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 uh, is, is losing traction. I think Bannon was also of the mind, not that it got him in trouble, but I think he was of the same mind as Trump. And I believe, Perry, a majority of Americans, uh, when we're talking about what was going on in Charlottesville, that it wasn't just one side that was involved in the violence. And when Trump said, both sides are guilty of the violence. I think Bannon, I'm sure, agreed with him, and we'll hear more about that. You know, um, we have the, the okay. left, Perry, telling us how bad we are on the right, and yet nobody's talking much about, except in Boston. To this, Dan, 
I'm yeah, sorry. excuse me. Let me ask you this. We've got a little bit. Go ahead. Uh, leaving the White House, he made the comment that the president. You cut out on me, sir. And yet at the same time, he announced he's going after rhinos, which is Republican in name only, and Democrats. That he was going to declare war on them. Yep. I'm wondering if this isn't a good cop, bad cop move. Absolutely. And he's very oh, much on. Very good. Very, very keen observation, sir. You're right. You're, you're right on. I mean, he, there are things that Bannon can say now that he can never say in the White House. And Trump wants somebody outside the White House that can just rain down hell on fire. I, uh, thank you, my friend. Uh, we value your time. Give us a quick update on songs and stories for soldiers, what you're doing. We're over uh, 12,000 players distributed. We are approaching 75 facilities. We've got a big meeting in, in the fall with um, the uh, incoming president of the MOA chapters in the state of Florida, which is 44 chapters, talking about using songs and stories as a program for the 44 chapters in Florida as a pilot for the National Mall, which is almost 400,000 soldiers. Wow. Let me say to our viewers and listeners, you can go to songsandstoriesforsoldiers.us, check out what Dan is doing there, partner with him, support what he's doing. It's a wonderful work and it is making a huge impact. Again, that's songsandstoriesforsoldiers.us. Well, thank you, Dan. I didn't know you're writing for Laura Ingram, Newsmax. That's good stuff, and uh, you got all your your uh, your trilogies out there. I don't know. All right, we we apologize for the connection. We'll have to let him go, and uh, sorry about that. We've had a little bit of a uh, audio connection with him there, but again, let me encourage you to check out uh, the website that he where he helps uh, uh, veterans. It's called Song. Songs and stories for soldiers.us and of course Dan Perkins.guru, where you can check out some of his writings now that he's writing for the Laura Ingram website and Newsmax as well. There's a uh, picture of all three of his uh, trilogies there The Brotherhood of the Red Nile, and there's three of them that are out. You can check that out uh, as well when you uh, go to his website. And those are trilogies, uh, basically, which centers around the Islamic nuclear terrorism against the United States. And he's recognized as a radical Islamic terrorist expert. And uh, he contributes to a lot of the websites that make a big difference in our country. So check it out. Thank you, brother. God bless. Stay in touch. Thank you, sir. It's always a pleasure. Okay. Uh, again, we apologize for a little bit of a audio breakup there, but uh, there's a lot to share there and check it out. And you can uh, pick up Dan a little bit later on when we put this up on the Dove website at the Dove.us. I'd stick around. I've got some great programming coming your way. And again, let me encourage you, um, if you haven't picked up Jodell Onstott's book called Yahweh Exists, you may want to check that out as well. Uh, here's a picture of it here. I'll hold it up for you. Give you an idea how thick it is.